hopsters are required to strip down to their most naked selves with me. They show me their numbers of their bank account, their credit card statements. I know everybody's debt. They tell me their fears and their dreams. They share their failures in their business and their struggles. I know more of their secrets than most of their spouses and best friends do. And it is an honor that I do not take lightly. The more intimate that my clients can get with me, the more results they're going to see. Welcome to Sincerely Future You, a podcast that helps ambitious women like you make decisions today with the future you in mind. Hello, hapsters. I want to kick it off with shouting out one of the coolest responses I've gotten personally from a listener of the podcast. And it's because this listener is going to be on Survivor, currently preparing to be on the TV show of Survivor. If you guys listen to that episode, or if you know me personally, you know, I'm a super fan of the show Survivor. I had a family friend that was on, you know, season two way back in the day. I used to watch them live on TV. And then me and my husband re-stumbled upon Survivor on Netflix a couple of years ago, and we've been binge catching up on it ever since. So I decided to do a podcast on the success tools that I learned from binge watching Survivor on maternity leave. Go back and listen to that hilarious and very insightful episode if you haven't yet. But this listener who just wrote in said this, Hi, Jess. My name is blank. And this is a name that I'm intending for you to recognize later when I'm casted on Survivor. And you'll be like, oh yeah, that guy told me this would happen. I just wanted to compliment your podcast, particularly episode 96. I have saved so many podcasts that I listen to on repeat, preparing me for my time in Fiji. There are casting tips, Jeff Probst interviews, as well as interviews with winners and or some of my favorite players, reviews of the shows and you. Yes, you, a fan with no inside scoop on the show, gave just as good advice on how to approach the dynamics of competition as anything else I've saved. Best wishes to you, future soul survivor. Super rad. And I can't wait to have a follow-up episode of this for sure when this guy is inevitably cast on Survivor and then also inevitably pays me like, whatever, half of his million dollars for crediting me with him winning Survivor. You're welcome in advance. But this just goes to show you, you guys, we have a lot of fun here on this show. We are here to get close with you, to get intimate, to get personal, for you guys to really feel like you can take what we're talking about on the show and apply it to your particular life. So whether you're listening to this and you are an entrepreneur or you just listen to this because you like to apply this work that we talk about, this future work of time management, of money management, of the drama and mindset management in your brain, and you want to apply it to any success and pursuit that you're listening to, I applaud you and I want to hear from you. So make sure that you leave a review on the show or always DM me on Instagram at Jess McKinley Wayno. I would love to hear from you and shout you out on the show. So go leave a review right now. All right. Speaking of intimate and getting to know each other and feeling a closeness, that is what we are going to be talking about today. As you guys know, I did subscribe to that word of the year and I picked two words and a couple of episodes ago, we talked about sold out, which was the word that I chose to put on my ring that I bought for all of my clients when they chose their word of the year. And the other word was intimate. But before we talk about that, I did want to catch you guys up on the things that are happening in the business behind the scenes. I love to give you a a behind the scenes catch up. So recently I revisited a practice that I have my clients do, and I did it on myself. I asked, what is different about future me? Here's what I wrote down. I wanted to share it with you because this question was so powerful for my clients and they Uh, they were having such incredible aha moments and I was reading the journals and getting a little jealous. I was like, wait, I need to do this again. It's constant work, this future work, you guys. And if you're not doing it, ask yourself this high quality question today. What is different about future me? 
So future me, she believes that selling out is the norm. She is a provider of big opportunities. She creates dream roles within her business for coaches, operations, event producers, photographers, videographers, admins, saleswomen. She books big rooms for events and hosts bold, curated, big, and intimate coaching containers. She is known. She comes highly recommended by people she's never met. Her podcast is the go-to business podcast for people at all phases of business who are craving more transparency and numbers from a real emotional CEO. She is raw, fun, brave, relaxed, a trailblazer a la Cheryl Strayed, Simone Soul, Marie Forleo, Brooke Castillo, Elizabeth Gilbert, Mel Robbins, and Glennon Doyle. Current me is a touch of some of these things. Yes, I'm raw when it doesn't ruffle too many feathers. I'm fun when I'm not confused about how things should look. I'm brave-ish. I'm relaxed until I'm not. And I have set ablaze a trailer too. But I still mindlessly walk upon paths set before me most of the time. And I really want to be as honest with myself as possible about this. Because the most stark contrast between future me and current me is this. I am barely scratching the surface of being known. I am revered in small circles. I am trickling my way into the awareness of those who need me, but that's about to change. I am about to bust through the floodgates, you guys. My name is going to be coming bursting onto the scene and the impact is going to make waves. People will see themselves and their own possibility in mine. The ripple effect will be massive as new leaders begin to emerge through my mentorship. 10 out of 10 recommend going deep into this high quality question. It was really fun for me. What is different about future you and specifically decide, are you talking about future you in one year, in three years, in five years, 10 years, 20 years, 50 years, get really specific and your answers will be a little bit different. Okay. So we're almost a month into Q2 and I'm going to update you on these words of the year. So whether you think it's cliche or whether you did subscribe and pick a word of the year for yourself, there's a lesson here and I implore you to take it. A few weeks ago, I talked about sold out and that episode was super powerful. The focus of focusing on sold out created the result of sold out in my business. So I also don't like rules. And so I chose another word, which which was intimate. And I want to give you an update on how that's playing out and how I'm applying it and how you might consider, even if it's not your word of the year, being more intentionally intimate within your business and your life. Okay. So I had to go and look up intimate and how all of the ways that it is defined in the dictionary. And this is what popped up. Intimate is defined as closeness, togetherness, rapport, attachment, familiarity, cozy, warmth, innermost details, private, secret, vulnerable, and also of course, sexual, (laughs) which I don't know that we're, we're, we might dabble into that here, but, uh, it's far, we'll start off with the business. Here's how I'm applying it. Let's talk about it in terms of time, time, intimacy is crucial for me. And this is some, probably the biggest reason that I decided to choose this word was because I wanted intimacy on my calendar. So I wanted, of course, intimacy, the way that we, most of us think of this word is in our romantic relationship. So I wanted to make sure that there was time for intimacy with my husband, whether it's via dates, we started doing a Fred Astaire Fred Astaire dance dates, and we're just taking some ballroom lessons, which has been fun and silly. It's been actually, we've had to cancel so many times for lack of childcare, but we're still making sure that we're, we're creating time for ourselves, um, separate from the kiddos. Then, uh, also making sure that there's time for physical intimacy. You guys know when you have a baby, it's like, it just is difficult to, unless you're really, really intentional with it, to find that time and carve out that time just for you and one-on-one time with another person, whether it's your romantic partner or a friend or someone else. So 
I've been so intentional about putting that time on my calendar. Also, intimacy on my calendar looks like one-on-one phone calls or one-on-one in-person meetups, whether it's a coffee date or whether it is a business meetup. I just started doing Marco Polos with um, some girlfriends, some mom friends of mine, because I found that it's nearly impossible for us to catch up on the phone because our kids are always talking in the background and we're never free at the same time. So Marco Polo is an app that allows us to leave video messages, feels like we're talking, and then we can respond later when we have the time. So loving that. Um, Intimacy in terms of family and chill time with the summer coming. I have lots of that on my calendar, blocked out. And we talked about this when we were in the episode about planning your Q1 and when to start planning or planning your Q4 and when to start planning. So you can go back and listen to that episode. I'll make sure I put it in the show notes. Um, But I block out my vacation time, my personal time well in advance so that when I'm creating my launches and creating my business, I never feel like, oh gosh, this is might take away from my time with my kids. No, I know that I'm carving out my fun, that intimacy with my family, with my friends, with myself. It's on my calendar first. That's one of the rules of scheduling fun first. So make sure that you are including intimacy as a category to that umbrella of fun. Okay. So time. That is how I am tackling intimacy on my calendar. Now let's talk about money. We get really intimate with money in happening sessions, but I wanted to make sure I was doing the same thing with myself. So my bookkeeper, Natalie, and I, um, you may know her from an episode where we talked about future-focused bookkeeping and accounting on the podcast, and we are getting next level. We are now doing weekly updates and tracking against our goals. So one of the things that I find brings entrepreneurs to the next level is how much they're willing to look at their numbers. One of the biggest obstacles or one of the biggest objections I get to this practice is actually less to do with I'm not good at it, even though that excuse does come up. It's more I'm avoiding it because of how it might make me feel or there are certain things that I do need to uh, get better at or develop at scale at. And so I avoid it altogether. Now think about this in terms of the traditional definition of intimacy and closeness. When you're growing up, when you're trying to decide like, who do I want to be friends with and who do I want to let in and get vulnerable with, you know, if you don't know how they're going to perceive you, you might just avoid it altogether. And those of you who are introverts, you might relate to this about how difficult it is for you to get intimate with other people. Well, just know that one of the safest places to practice getting intimate is with yourself. And if you're a business owner, it's with your own business. Getting intimate with your business can look like looking and reflecting and evaluating what is the reality of your business. Are you tracking your goal against your actuals? So for me, when I set a goal, it doesn't just sit there and then I review it on January 1st and then I review it again on December 31st. No, I look at what does that mean for this month? Where am I tracking towards that goal or not? What would have to happen differently for me to continue to track? So right now, I am currently at about 60% tracking towards my goal right now, which is not what I wanted. However, I'm still not worried because I am so intimate with my numbers that I am able to now in April get really clear about all of the things that will need to happen in order for me to still hit my goal of 300K by the end of the year. So I'm just not worried. And I want all of you guys to experience this level of intimacy with your business where you can feel the negative emotion that might come up immediately when you get intimate with your numbers and then not use it as a way to beat yourself up or to judge yourself or to be critical. Instead, intimacy is about that closeness. It's about that vulnerability. So what do we do with that vulnerability that we're giving to ourselves by looking at our numbers? We have compassion and love and we create safety for ourselves to make mistakes, to be not on track, to collect failures. And because the future you 
she's already at the goal. So if that's really true, how how can we create a safe space for ourselves to be intimate and to look at all our numbers and not to have to avoid it? Because we know that even if it's looking like we're tracking at 60%, hey, that was always how it was supposed to go. The reality of entrepreneurship isn't that it it goes on a one diagonal straight pretty line that we want it to do. It's going to have dips and it's going to have peaks and it's going to have valleys. And sometimes it's going to look like a big old dipping curve and it'll get exponential at the end as you gain momentum, as you figure things out, as things start to apply. And whatever your line looks like for you, just know that intimacy with your numbers is always going to create a stronger business rather than a weaker business. Okay. In terms of money and intimacy, I decided this was the year that me and my husband of almost one year, our one year anniversary is in two weeks. And I decided, Hey, maybe it's about time that we, like, we talk about money all, all the time. You guys know, you've heard him on the podcast. We talked about, um, budgeting and finances as a couple. However, when it comes to the future, we both have a lot of separate things going on and we haven't sat down and had, iron down all of the details of, Hey, what is our plan with the kids with college? What do we plan to provide for them? Do we want them to take out loans? Do we want to encourage them to take a gap year or to consider other options other than college? What are the finances of our retirement? How much money do we want to consider, um, pulling out now from our, our resources? If we want to do other diversified investments, all of that. I was like, future planning, we're getting intimate, babe. I We started, I met with my financial advisor and then I brought all of it to Mark. And I said, hey, 529 plans, are we contributing towards college accounts for Calvin and Mari? Uh, how much are we collectively contributing towards Calvin? And how much do I have to talk to my ex-husband about? You know, there's a lot of variables and there will be for your life too. Life is has complexity and it has different layers to it. And the way that you get to feel that CEO level mastery, whether you're talking about your money or your time in your business or in your personal life, you want to approach it as the CEO of your life. The way you do that is by getting intimate, is by going in, by asking the tough questions now, by looking at all the numbers, by seeing what part of this doesn't make sense to me and asking the questions, being willing to look stupid, being willing to be vulnerable, right? So what are our investment goals? What are my investment goals? What is like our retirement planning and also our YOLO planning? I'm currently reading a book and I probably will do a whole podcast episode on it, but it's called The Measure. And the whole concept of the book is basically out of nowhere, all these boxes are sent to people with all over the world with strings and the string measures the length of your life. It's the measure of your life. So people are finding out how long they're going to live and whether uh, down to like a number of two weeks of whether they're going to live until their eighties or they have a shorter string and the book it's okay. I don't know how many stars I'm going to give it. I'm still in the middle of it, but the concept is really affecting me and it's just making me think about my whole life and how we really just don't know what's going to happen. So getting intimate in the numbers and the combination of reading this book has made me really ask some tough questions and decide, you know, how much of my money do I want to be spending right now in a big way? If I don't know how much time I have on this earth and the same thing with my business, it's like, how big do I want to go right now? Like all of these things that I'm putting off Do what, what really do I want to put off and what do I want to take more risks in? Right. If, if really you don't know if you are going to have another 50 years, or maybe you're going to have 10 or maybe just one. So intimacy in money is looking on future planning with Mark, future planning with my bookkeeper, Natalie, and intimacy with my process, my backend and my customer journey. So I'm really looking at, okay, what does it look like for someone to find me, whether on social media or in person? And what is their journey of experiencing me 
in that mentorship space of the interwebs and following me or listening to me on the podcast? And what is your journey until you become a customer? And then your journey through happening sessions until you're offboarded and out in the world crushing it right? And I am getting really intimate with that process. I found so many kinks. I'm asking my clients, Hey, what feedback do you have for me? I created a whole offboarding process for my September hapsters with a questionnaire for them so that I could just make it better and better and better. I'm getting intimate so that I can improve, right? Okay. Intimacy as I grow. Intimacy as I grow as the CEO, my CEO mindset looks like Um, what do I want my beliefs and positioning to be? So I decided I want to continue to maintain a level of transparency in my business. I know as people's businesses grow, a lot of people, their philosophy is like, okay, I'm not going to share as much because this is like, this is for me to know. And then when my clients come in, I can teach them on, I don't want to give away too much that's not for me. I just, I think that my business is always going to be sealed with transparency. I think that's what you guys are telling me that you love from me. You love the episodes where I tell you exactly how much, how many clients I signed or exactly how much money I spent or how much money I earned in something. And I respect that in my mentors as well. So I decided I want to keep that intimacy. Transparency to me is intimacy. It's how I'm showing you hey, I'm in this too. I'm in the trenches with you. We're learning and we're figuring this out together. And I'm always going to share with you what failures I collected, what I'm learning there and what wins I had so that you know for real that your mentor is telling the truth and that is someone that is a good match for you or not. I am going to continue to be a mentor that is not define myself as an expert in all things business, that I am an expert in my process. I'm an expert in being where I'm at while I'm working towards where I'm going. I'm an expert in making a habit of sharing where I'm struggling, collecting failures and what I'm learning, right? So I am deciding as I'm growing and as I'm scaling my business, how I want to maintain intimacy with my clients and with my audience, right? So policies and practices, I want to maintain personalized celebrations. So I'm going to continue to shout people out on the podcast. I last round, you heard me talk about creating a bonus where if they hit their revenue goal in March, I sent them a Venmo from my personal account, right? This is just the type of intimacy that I like to have with my clients. I want to continue to coach via journals. Currently, I don't know that that is going to be something that I will be able to maintain as we grow completely, but I do want that practice to continue. So I will likely in the future hire coaches to come in to do written coaching behind the scenes between calls. But Currently, I still want to do that. I think that at 15 people in this group, I have dedicated and carved out the time and I feel great about the decision. I want to continue to make policies that match my values. I want to continue to make exceptions based on empathy and support, not based on enabling and people pleasing. So intimacy to me looks like not treating my clients like numbers and hearing them out when there is a situation where someone may need to pause their payment and deciding for me, is me allowing them to pause their payment? Is it enabling a behavior that I want them to overcome? Or is it people pleasing them and it really isn't the right choice? Or is it just the right thing to do? Is it coming from empathy and support. And I've been able to do that probably one time each round. And um, recently with one of my one-on-one clients from a place of like delaying a payment and pausing it and just feeling really solid in that. And I think the more I ask these questions, the more I can be really clear about the right way to make exceptions to my policies that really feel good and that help my clients rather than enable them. Also, in terms of policies and practices, I want to create safety for people to buy in a way that feels good to them. So I see out there a lot of selling that is selling in a not great way. We talked about this in the bonuses episode. So like how to do it, how to not do it. I see a lot of people gaslighting people into um, buying their programs and or just using sales techniques that 
are ultimately really gross, <laughs> I think, and are causing people to focus on where they're not doing well and causing people to feel weak, like they need you. And that's why they have to buy from you. And I think that you know, it's out there. And I've actually been trained a little bit in some of these policies and I'm starting to learn, Hey, I want to sell in a really consensual way. I want to sell in a way that just feels intimate for sure. And honest, and I'm never going to stop telling the truth to my clients. And ultimately I really do believe in the value of my offer. So in most times I'm going to sell very directly, but I want people to feel that they have total safety to say no and to decide for themselves if it is not a good fit. So I'm getting really clear on that. I want to tell people what I see and then make offers for them to make the decision, to trust themselves, to share examples of my own journey, right? And create that intimacy and vulnerability there to show them where I relate to their current struggles and fears and hesitations. Um, I'm going to continue to do that. I'm not going to just use their situation. I think one of the reasons I went into life coaching over therapy was because I believe in the value of a life coach using their own personal anecdotes in order to inspire and in order to connect and create a level of intimacy that allows you to be more vulnerable yourself and to look at your own numbers and your own math and your own business and your own mind without judgment. Okay. And then finally, I want to get intimate with my audience, keeping it business and personal intermingled. It was a big question mark I had this year. I was like, okay, as my brand is evolving, do I want to only be talking about business? Do I want to take my kids off my Instagram? Do I want to take, you know, my fitness journey off of my Instagram? Do I want to take my porch swing musings on off of my Instagram? And I decided no, I don't. I decided that a part of my brand is being intimate and sharing with you my personal journey and sharing with you my life as an example of what's possible to you. Because my ideal client is someone who wants not just a big business, but they want a big life too. And I want to be very clear about what that means and that it isn't all sunshine and rainbows and that I'm not just training and educating you guys on these strategies, which are very efficient and very useful and tried and true. But I'm also educating you guys on where to trust yourself and to be more intimate with yourself and to be more branded and specific rather than just following my account and taking from these tools and really not knowing how it could look in the real world. So I decided to keep my business and personal intermingled with my audience and keep it intimate over there and keeping it real on the podcast too. Um, you know, oftentimes I just end up scrapping an episode and deciding to record an episode that feels really personal to me. We talked about different formats for the show with my team. And I was like, do I cut out the intro? Do I share less about what's going on in my life? And I was like, that doesn't feel right to me. I like to listen to podcasts and listen to shows where the person is updating me like, where are you going on vacation? Where'd you just come back from? What are you struggling with? And not from this area of uh, I'm a celebrity and you really care that much of what's going on with me, but more from the perspective of, hey, you're a CEO that's on this journey, but you're a human being behind it too. And while business isn't personal, it is emotional. I want to be able to share and create that intimate space with you by showing you what's going on in my own life and talking about what I want and where I am going. Okay. So finally, intimacy with that next level network. This is something I really haven't talked about on the show, but as you are growing your business, you are going to be growing the level of thinkers that you surround yourself with. I was listening to this podcast that I don't even know if I can recommend you guys because it's in Spanish. It's called the Despertando's podcast of waking up. And it's a little five minute anecdotes. And this person was just talking about one of the most loving things that you can do is surround yourself with loving people all the time. And I was just thinking about that in terms of my business for where I'm going, I don't have too many people currently in my circle that are at the 
seven, eight figure range. I have a handful, a smattering, but like, I know them. maybe I'll talk to them once in a blue moon, but they're not in my ear on a regular, regular basis. And I want to change that. I want to get intimate with them. I want to figure out how can I be vulnerable and find out the way that I'm going to invest and listen and give in big ways to the people that I want to be around being willing to ask and risk looking stupid, but in an intimate, personal, vulnerable way, talking about where I'm going and what I want and just laying it out there. Okay. I get intimate with my clients quickly. It's impossible not to right? Hopsters are required to strip down to their most naked selves with me. They show me their numbers of their bank account, their credit card statements. I know everybody's debt. They tell me their fears and their dreams. They share their failures in their business and their struggles. I know more of their secrets than most of their spouses and best friends do. And it is an honor that I do not take lightly. The more intimate that my clients can get with me, the more results they're going to see. But intimacy, it's about warmth and closeness too. It requires safety and trust and privacy. And I want to create that for you in every sense of the word. That means if you're going to show me yours, I'm going to show you mine. I'm going to let you in deeper into more areas and corners of my life and my business so that you may be inspired to do the same. So if you like getting intimate here, It is 29 times as intimate in happening sessions. June 5th, we're going to be pre-enrolling for the September class. So you guys watch out for that. Make sure you are on the list so you can be the first in the room because sold out is the new norm. Let's go. Hey, Hapsters. If you want to learn more about today's topic, head over to whatshappening.com forward slash podcast. That's what's happening, dot com forward slash podcast. If you're a business owner and you're resonating with what we talk about here, what are you even doing? Come hang out with me over where the party's at on Instagram at what's happening, WJS. Again, that's happy, H-A-P-P-Y-N-I-N-G. And book a discovery call to see if coaching is your next best step.